Your entire world around you is a mirror that reflects back to you your dominant thoughts. We say wherever you look, there you are. It's almost like you live in a 360 degree mirror and wherever you look, you see yourself reflected back. Now, the three or four places where this is most common is, first of all, your relationships. Now, remember, human beings are extraordinarily sensitive so that if you have negative thoughts going on about anything, you affect the relationships close to instantaneously. They'll pick it up across the crowded room. If you're feeling happy, your relationships will reflect it immediately. If you're unhappy or angry for some reason, they'll reflect it immediately. A second area, by the way, has to do with income is your outer world of income will be determined by your inner world of attitude toward money earning, productivity, performance, and everything else. With regard to your health, your inner world of attitude toward health, food, diet, fitness, everything else determines your external world of health and also to success. If you believe that you're going to be a big success or you believe it on the inside, then you'll see it. It'll be reflected back to you in your outer world. Intelligent people realize that whatever they see in their outer world is coming from themselves. So they always ask this great question is, what is it in me? What is it in me that is causing what's going on in my environment? This is the mark, the question of the superior person. The average person always tries to blame something in their external environment or someone past, present, future. How we feel plays such a major part in our future. First, it's how you feel about the past. You need a healthy attitude about the past so that you use it, not live in it, but use it. Not carry it like a burden. But let the wise lessons you learned from the past now serve as fuel to furnish the future. Next, a good attitude about the future. You gotta set your goals. We look back for experience, but we look forward for inspiration. We must be instructed and inspired. Uh, no better inspiration than to set your goals. I started this process when I was 25 literally rocked my world, changed my life. I had no idea it was so simple. Here's how simple it is. Decide what you want. Write it all down and make a list of the people you want to meet, make a list of the books you want to read. Make a list of the classes you want to take. Make a list of the skills you want to learn. Make a list of the cities you want to visit. Uh, make a list of the investments you want to have. Just make these lists. Here's the next gate. Start checking them off. Put a lot of little things on you, some lists so you can start checking off something. Right away, that's part of the fun. Here's what's next. If you check off something major, celebrate. Because that inspires you to make a longer list of goals. And put everything on your list. Uh, little things insignificant to someone else important to you. I put a little revenge on my first list. My mentor said it was healthy. Some of the people who said I couldn't succeed, kid from the farms of Idaho. They went on my list. Couldn't wait to get my new car, drive it up on their lawn, say, oh, pardon me, here's the money to have it fixed. Just a little satisfaction. My Japanese friend Toro Aikida, and he says he put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. Way back then, everybody had Japanese gardeners. Everybody Japanese gardener said, I'm Japanese. I'm gonna have a Caucasian gardener. Okay, a little satisfaction's right. Set your goals, decide what you want. Write it down, start checking them off. It's parf stuff. Next. It's how you feel about everybody. If you want to be a leader, true leader, an entrepreneur of the highest order, well-respected, unique in your field. Here's one, how you feel about everybody. And this is philosophical as well. You cannot succeed by yourself. So a unique sense of appreciation of everybody goes with the territory of leadership. It takes everybody for each of us to be successful. One person doesn't make an economy. One person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. Uh, it takes everybody for this gathering today. All of you had to be here to make this gathering, everybody. If one of you were missing, there wouldn't be this many people here. Everybody to make something work for the office, whatever, the enterprise. Uh, it takes everybody the gift of America. But is everybody who came over the last two, three hundred years bringing with them their gifts? You know, our country has become such a depository of the gifts of the world like America has over the last two, three hundred years. People come in bringing their gifts. Gift of language, gift of learning, gift of politics, gift of government, gift of medicine, gift of healing, gift of music, gift of the work ethic. All this came in steady streams from all over the world, making us unusual because of the gifts that were brought. And understand that and appreciate it. 
Now it gives you open access to the market that's available to make your fortune. Now what I love to do is go back where these gifts came from. Not long ago, I was in Rome. I had 1,000 people in my class. Someone suggested Jim Rohn loves the music of Andrea Bocelli, the blind opera singer from Italy. So when they introduced me, I walked to the podium and all 1,000. Uh, these Italians stood up and sang for me one of Andrea Bocelli's songs in true Italian style. Here's I described it to my grandchildren. Later I said, here was the scene. A choir of 1,000 and an audience of one. And then that was me. I thought, here's where some of these gifts came, the gift of poetry. So I'll learn to appreciate the gifts. Now the last attitude is how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-esteem, which creates self-confidence. The, the greatest steps towards success come from self-confidence, and that comes from self-esteem. Doing what you know you should, so that at the end of the day, you have high, high self-esteem. It is our attitude toward life which will determine life's attitude toward us. Let's face the fact, honestly, that we shape our own lives, and the shapes of them will be determined by our attitudes. A person with a poor attitude toward learning, for example, isn't going to learn much until he changes his attitude. If we take the attitude that we cannot do something, we generally will not do it. An attitude of failure, and we whip before we start. So we know then that what we receive from life, what we accomplish or fail to accomplish, is due in large measure to our overall attitude. William James of Harvard University put it this way, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. And isn't it wonderful that we have this measure of control? Before we start talking about our attitude toward the world, let's talk about our attitude toward ourselves, since it is the attitude we take toward ourselves which determines our attitude toward the world. Now, right here we come to a rather strange fact. We're so familiar with ourselves, we tend to take ourselves for granted. We tend to minimize the things we can accomplish, the goals we can reach, and for some equally strange reason, believe others can accomplish things in our field which we cannot. There are literally millions of human beings living narrow, dark and frustrated lives, living defensively simply because they take a defensive, doubtful attitude toward themselves and, as a result, toward life in general. Many people are suspicious of and oppose change. Yet change is the one thing in life on which we can absolutely count. People who stay young all the years of their lives not only welcome change, but see it for what it really is. New opportunity, new chances for further fulfillment attitude is a reflection, a result of a person's will. It is incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently day by day. Now let's talk about the attitudes of people who are successful. The top five of the people who go sailing through life from one success to another and who, even when they fail at something, shrug it off and head right out again, no matter who the person is or what he does. Men and women in sales, business executives, people in all of the professions, wives and mothers, students, top people in the armed forces, public servants, men and women in the service of religion, working men and women in all fields of endeavor. Wherever you find a person doing an outstanding job and getting outstanding results, you will find a person with the right kind of attitude. These people take the attitude toward themselves, that they can accomplish what they set out to accomplish, that there's no good reason on earth why they can't be competent successful. They have a healthy attitude toward themselves, and as a result toward life and the things they want to accomplish. And because of this, they achieve some remarkable things, and they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a lot of other things. They're quite frequently no more brilliant or outstanding than the majority of the people by whom they're surrounded. But they did develop the right attitude and they found their accomplishments. Not too difficult and many times surprisingly easy, simply because it seems that so few are really trying really believe in themselves. Successful people come in all shapes and sizes and in widely varying degrees of intelligence, background, and so on. But they all have one thing in common. They expect more good out of life than bad. They expect to succeed more than they fail. If you want something worthwhile, take the attitude that there are a lot more reasons why you can have it than there are that you cannot, and set out to earn it. 
Go after it, work at it, ask for it, and nine times out of ten you will get it. Our environment is really a mirror of our mental attitude. If we don't like our environment, we have to change our attitude first. Now the world plays no favorites, it's impersonal. It doesn't care whether we change or not. Adopting a good, healthy attitude toward life doesn't affect the world and the people in it nearly as much as it affects us. It would be impossible to even estimate the number of jobs which have been lost, the number of promotions missed, the number of sales not made, the number of marriages ruined by poor attitudes, but you can number in the millions the jobs which are held but hated, your marriages which are tolerated but unhappy. All because of people who are waiting for the world and others to change toward them. Instead of being big enough and wise enough to at least make a test which will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt where most, or at least a big part of the trouble lies. Studies made to the lives of literally thousands of successful people have shown that they radiate confidence, assurance, they expect success, and they get success. You can spot these people by the way they walk, by the way they look and act. You can feel it about them when they enter a room. They may be short and fat or tall and thin or any combination in between, but they have about them the attitude of success. In the record greener pastures, I'll get into this next statement. But right now I want you to realize, if you don't already, that in five years or less, you can get right to the top of the work you're now doing. I know this, but the important question here is, do you know this? The minute you do know it, you will have this right attitude. I'm talking about the easiest and most effective means of forming a good attitude habit is to begin to act as though you have a good, positive, expectant attitude toward life. That's right. Begin right now to walk, act, and look as though you belong to this group. If you're already in the top five, you'll know what I mean. If you've never tried it, you'll be amazed at what happens. Our reactions trigger feelings just as feelings trigger actions. Now let me tell you of a little test you can make which will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that a good attitude can change a person's life as dramatically as walking from a darkened room into the bright, clear light of day. Not long ago I read a line which went, life is dull only to dull people. This is true, but it also could have read life is interesting only to interesting people or life is successful only to successful people. And what I'm trying to say is that you must first become mentally from an attitude standpoint <laughs> that you wish to achieve. A famous restaurateur was being interviewed by a reporter who asked, when did you become successful? And he replied, I was successful when I was sleeping on park benches because I knew what I wanted to do and that I would do it. In short, his attitude had been one of success, of expecting success long before the material, the tangible rewards of success had been earned. We'll get into this particular phase of lead the field in record number three, worthy destination. But for now, remember that a person must act, look, and because of these things feel successful before the success he seeks can come. 